In today's Urbandum video, we explore a historic castle-like mansion in the middle of nowhere. The 200-year-old structure boasts some dated architecture that has been lost to neglect caused deterioration. Join us as we enter the property and quickly find out it isn't going to be as simple as we had originally thought. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last video we asked the question would you like to see more post-war abandonments such as military bases and air raid shelters. We had various responses but we would like to highlight this comment from Rob who suggested we cover more vehicle graveyards in relation to derelict remnants of the war. We would love to visit some of these and we'll look into it in the near future but continue to keep variety with our videos as suggested. This week we are asking for your renovation ideas for the mansion shown in today's video. Be sure to comment your responses below to possibly be featured in our next upload. After a long walk across nature filled territory we eventually made it to this stunning building located within a small woodland. The neo-gothic architecture makes the manor very impressive, blocking chimney stacks with turrets and a flat roof with castle-like crenellations. It seemed too easy to enter the structure, but as we would soon find out, besides wooden boarding, the building had its main form of protection internally. Once inside, we anticipated lower level sensors, so we began to carefully explore the upper rooms in order to save time if we accidentally triggered any surprises. It's an interesting wallpaper. It sucks that this place has been boarded up. It was really nice with natural light when I first saw it online. It's definitely a kid's bedroom. And the car themed wallpaper. There's so many rooms in this place due to the extended family of the owner that would live here. Almost nothing furniture wise remained in the building, but we were much more interested in the rare architecture. There isn't a specific number, but at a guess, we would say there are over 30 bedrooms in the mansion. Some great peeling paint in this room. For some reason this room just looks a lot older than all the others with the door frames and this fireplace. Amazingly, the house was last lived in around five years ago, so decay has progressed rapidly since then, when the last owner sadly passed away. Wow, the curvature in this room. You'd think there'd be a bay window, but... They've just come for this small rectangular design. I'm not complaining though, it's a really nice space. At this point, after almost being able to wander through the entire top floor, we sighted our first sensor of the building. It was positioned in an awkward spot by the central staircase, tactically placed to protect what's arguably the most ornate area in the whole manor. You can see why they have sensors. The architecture is amazing.
Do you know what? I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go into the room on the right. Just go really slow. There was no way to get around it, so we figured we were going to have to test its detection range. Sometimes we have been able to slowly amble away from these sort of alarms in the past. We quickly left the building and retreated to cover nearby where we could keep watch for a while. As we waited to see what happens post alarm, you might as well learn some history about the old mansion. At a fee of under £30,000, the manor was constructed in the early 1800s by the owner of the estate it is located in. After his death and then the death of the woman next in line, the estate was split up to multiple owners. A plan was undergoing in the 1880s to demolish the castle and replace it with a new clubhouse for a massive golf course in the beautiful surroundings. Luckily this didn't go ahead, but the golf course still opened up until the end of World War I when it failed to operate due to the tougher conditions. At this time, the manor was bought by a youth hostel company that used it for 30 years until the late 1960s. Following this, it was sold to the last owner, a man who died five years ago, causing the building to enter the stage of demise it suffers from today. It's gonna get you at any point, it's gonna get you along now. If it gets you at any point, it'll get you in the next few steps. Meanwhile, nobody had turned up after an hour of waiting, so we decided to head back in and again try to dodge the alarm, this time a bit better. Wow, this window is beautiful. With the red roses going along the sides. Jesus Christ, the sag in this room, oh my god, I'm not taking one step in there, sucks because of that fireplace as well, that looks to have somewhat survived, how long it will survive from now I'm not sure though. It was getting dark quickly, so it was finally time to take in the incredible staircase that is positioned centrally in the building. After crawling past the detected part of the upper steps, we were free to have a closer look at the architecture presented. With torchlight at night, you can't appreciate the true beauty of this space, consisting of a green coffered ceiling with many intricate designs, a large dome and detailed banister. One thing we did notice that was missing from last visits to the abandoned mansion was a red carpet draped over the staircase, which had vanished. Still, we weren't going to complain. architecture in here. It's a tiny room though. Oh, it does lead into a bigger bit, which also shares the same architecture. We're trying to minimise our flashlight use just in case it sets off a sensor. It was difficult exploring the lower floors due to the expected increase in sensors, meaning some parts of the building were totally off limits. All these rooms have such nice details. These little faces. This is the only other bit that we're not doing, just because if I do this slowly to the right, the sensor on the door there, you can probably see it, I'll circle it and edit. But yeah, this just looks like some back. Bedrooms maybe and lounges and stuff. 
nothing too interesting in terms of the architecture. We've covered all of that, luckily, without setting any alarms off, or at least on our second try. This is the front part of the manor. It's a nice arch when you come in. I'm not going to go too close though because just above that door at the end is another centre. I think that's the fourth one we've seen so far. There wasn't much else to see that intrigued us, so we decided to leave whilst no alarms blared. Ultimately, it had been a great success being able to see much more than we anticipated in the manor. As we exited, we weren't as cautious when we crawled past the staircase alarm, which shows the fine margins of our previous prone past it. We hope you enjoyed our showing of the mansion. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs taken at the vacant mansion. If you like the look of them, be sure to check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images from our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Hopefully what we were able to show from the building was worth the watch. Would you go back inside a disused structure after setting off the alarm? See you next time.